their life. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this uh, new webinar series that we're holding. We're so excited to have everybody here. Um, we're here with Randy and Ashley, and we've got a lot of questions for them just about getting published and the importance of getting published um, and they want to share their best tips and tricks with you. So before we hand it over to them, I just want to briefly go over why getting published is so important. So many of you guys know this, that's why you're here or already members of Two Bright Lights. Um, but there's such a growing need and interest in wedding content out there. At, we know that 81% of brides and grooms planning their big day are looking for real wedding content. And it's such a great way to get your materials and your content out there that getting published is just an easy way to grow brand awareness. Um, and it's kind of a no brainer when you're trying to grow your brand leads and clientele. So we're gonna kind of stop chatting here and hand it over to Randy and Ashley. We know you wanna hear from them. Um, so. They're, they're a great, fabulous wedding photography duo, and um, they're super happy to answer all of your questions. And um, as we always do for all of our webinars, feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, I have Megan here with me. She's uh, controlling the control panel, so she'll be answering some of your questions, and then we'll hopefully have time to um, voice some of them out loud and have Randy and Ashley uh, answer them directly. So, um, all right, I'm gonna turn it over to them. All right. Hey guys, how are you? We're doing very well, thank you. How are you? Thanks so much for joining us. We're really excited. Um, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start the PowerPoint so you guys can uh, go off of that and everybody else can see um, the questions too. So if they miss anything, they'll see it on the slide. Perfect. Perfect. Right. So. All right. So as I said, why getting published is super important. Um, so let me take it over to Randy and Ashley. So first question, how did you get your start as photographers? Let's just start this one. Okay, um, so we started our business kind of before we even started our business. We were living in Japan um, back in 2008, 2009, and Randy deployed to Afghanistan, and before he left, he bought me a um, DSLR, a little Nikon D40, and um, I started taking pictures of just everything and everyone, and um, when we moved back to the States in 2010, we were stationed in Minot, North Dakota, and um, within a week or so of one of my friends saying, hey, I think I started a photography business, I went, oh my gosh, if she can do it, so can I. And Randy said, about damn time, excuse the language, and um, yeah, we had all our ducks in a row within a week and just kind of hit the ground running, and that was the summer of 2010. That's awesome. Uh, and then to, uh, October 2013, 13. Um, I was able to start my first, I shot my very first wedding. Um, Ashley kind of looked at me, and we were both looking at each other, and I noticed that she kept like hiring second shooters and I'm like, well, why, why don't I just second shoot the, the wedding, you know? And she took 24 hours she spent with me. She went through all the functions on the camera, picked it up really quickly. We went to our first wedding and um, shot my first wedding and we've been working ever since together. That's awesome. And isn't this picture from that wedding? Yes, it it is. That was That was Randy's first official wedding photo back in October 2013 when we were living in Colorado. Not bad, Randy. Not bad. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, going into that, so you started out as photographers, and you obviously wanted to grow your business and um, just grow your clientele. So how did getting published help you guys with that? Why do you want to be published? Well, when you start getting published, um, it creates SEO and backlinks from each publication. So if you have um, – a number of publications that's creating the backlinks back to your website back to your Facebook and it creates more exposure for you as well as your business which then people are, are able to share and, share and it becomes a trust factor yeah so one of the the big reasons that we love being published is it really builds a trust factor within the wedding industry itself um, when brides see you published on several 
uh, publications, uh, including the Two Bright Lights blog or Style Me Pretty or um, uh, hundreds of other uh, affiliates that Two Bright Lights has, um, it really builds a trust factor because brides are going to see that and they're going to go, oh my gosh, if they are published there, maybe my wedding can get published there. And when they continuously are seeing you published on other places and then your vendor friends, your frienders as we like to call them, um, your wedding planners, your venues, your caterers, even DJs, uh, when they're referring you to, it's this whole circle of trust and um, getting published is just one part of that big part. And then I, I, I also think it, it brings in a lot of, it increases your income. Um, when you have publications from other um, different blogs and different uh, things, it creates a flow of okay. Your vendor is now seeing that you hey you just got a blog or you got your work published. It, it was well, our work as well. You shared that you got you're getting these referrals back and forth, back and forth, and it creates this this vendorship which allows more uh, income to come in because they're referring you, you're referring them. So it constantly is building a friendship between the vendors. Yeah, then that's super important. It's uh, those relationships that really can take you far. SEO and backlinks are important, but those you know word of mouth and referrals are super important, which you guys um, seem to be pros at. Um, so, and I know that you guys have this TV couple that um, is, is kind of a big deal. So how did getting published play a role? And, and for people who might not know, explain the TV couple and, and what happened with that wedding. Absolutely. So um, when we moved from Colorado to California in the summer of 2014, this couple, Lou and Chris, they hired us to do their engagement photos. And so we absolutely adored this couple. We had a lot of fun. and. Um, I went ahead and I submitted their um, same-sex engagement session to basically every single gay-friendly blog that Two Bright Lights has to offer, and we were blessed enough to have it picked up pretty much by every single one. And a few months later, we got an email from a TV producer, and she introduced herself and said, hey, we saw your couple on such and such blog, and... Um, if you could just pass along their inf or our information to them because we're casting for a TV show. And, I mean, we were fresh to California, and we were like, okay, sure, because that's really how it works, but all right, whatever. So we, we forwarded the information along to Lou and Chris, and we didn't hear anything for about six months. And then one day, Lou calls and said, you guys are never going to believe this, but we got cast on a TV show, and our entire wedding is going to be documented on the FYI network, which is owned by A&E for a new show called Bride and Prejudice, which actually went to air earlier this year. Um, and it was just this really amazing thing that happened. And um, it's 100% thanks to Two Bright Lights and getting published because without that, the TV producer would have never seen it. Wow. Okay. So not only did it um, help with the TV couple, um, but it – it just it helped you guys grow your brand awareness right when you are fresh into California. Um, so it, it really it was a win-win for everybody. Your couple got featured on TV, which I'm sure they were super excited about, and then yeah. you, guys, <laughs> you know, got more attention driven. And so just in general, besides um, that, that couple in particular, what's one thing that you've learned, um, what's one unexpected thing that you've learned since getting published? Uh, really, it's just how easy it is to get published. I mean, if you are able to take the time and look at the different publications on Two Bright Lights and determine what your style and how you shoot a wedding, um, how it fits the different publications, that's going to lead you to success. Because if you're submitting to different blogs that aren't your style and completely different and opposite um, style, it, it really creates a, it just a, it wastes time. Because the blogs that are looking at these have to take the time to look at it and determine, okay, yeah, this isn't a right fit for us. And it also wastes your time when you're submitting to something that your um, your ideal publication is not going to – you're submitting it to something that really is not going to be any any use for you. So what you have to do is determine what you actually – you know, what your style is and how it fits into different blogs and take the time to determine that first. And we'll get, I think we'll get more into that later, but one thing I really want to touch base on is prioritizing 
um, publication within your own workflow. So for us, we shoot the wedding, we call the wedding, we edit the wedding, we blog the wedding, we, we send the wedding to our clients and our friends, and then um, the last step in our workflow is submitting through two bright lights. And we actually use pretty much the same photos that we use from our blog onto the public or um, onto two bright lights for publication. And then we also will say to the editors, if there's anything you want from the full gallery, here's also the link when you can write type the little message um, when you're submitting the publications. And it's it's been pretty amazing. We have a pretty good success rate with getting all our, our weddings picked up that way. Great. Um, so I'm actually going to pause for a second with our, our set questions because we have one from Stephanie. Um, and so she wants to know, do you guys shoot for publication specifically? If so, which ones? And are the majority paid client ses sessions? It's a really great question, Stephanie. Thanks for asking. Um, we don't do side shoots for publication purposes. All of the, the weddings that you've seen us have published were actually real clients with um, real brides and grooms, real grooms and grooms, real brides and brides. And um, it's just, we don't have time for style shoots to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, we, we will shoot um, any wedding and then while we're shooting we'll actually specifically um, go and say, okay, this wedding would be a really perfect fit for green wedding shoes, so let's submit it there. Or this would be a really great fit for a DIY wedding blog. So we don't shoot specifically for publications, but we are very specific with where we submit based on the wedding or session itself. Great. All right. Well, I'm going to continue on with, with our questions. Um, so the next one will be, what would you recommend to a first-time submitter? Oh. Um, what would you say? I would say, like I was saying before, I think uh, going and determining what your style is compared to the publications out there. There's tons of publications, so just take the time to actually go in there. Research, then, research where you're publishing exactly. before you before you submit. Um, if you're if you're really kind of dark and moody, it might not fit on a blog that really likes light and airy that type of thing. Um, the other the other thing I would say is. The album story, make sure you guys are filling that out because the editors will actually glean information from the story that you guys submit um, for their own publication. It just makes their job a lot easier and they're more likely to go, oh my gosh, they put all this cool information in and now we have something to put in words along with these beautiful photos. So if you have a really cool detail from the wedding, for example, we had a wedding once where the bride had a um, handkerchief that had been handed down, um, and every woman in her family had carried this hand-knitted 100-year-old handkerchief down the aisle, and she carried it with her bouquet. So knowing that, we were able to use that photo in their detail, or I'm sorry, use that um, handkerchief with their photos for their details and to include just that little bit of um, backstory into the wedding photos and the wedding story so that way it makes this wedding just a little bit more unique it kind of makes it stand out a little bit and it's also something that resonates with brides and, right. and also i think one thing uh before you're you're looking to submit once you're once you get to the location that you're going to be shooting the wedding you, you have to constantly be thinking about okay i'm going to be submitting this for a publication let what do i need to photograph and you have to have your list and be like okay we need to get details we need to get this keep constantly going over in your mind what you need to constantly have to be able to submit to the publication or to get picked up. Great. And ask for help. If you need help, ask for help. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm going to pause again because we got a, a couple of really great questions that I think go well with what you guys have been talking about. Um, so the first one I'm going to cover is from Kelly. And she wants to know, um, do you have a list of favorite places to submit to, or do you look through them all on a case-by-case -case basis? Both. Um, we really like to submit, obviously, to the Two Bright Lights blog. Um, we also like Borrowed in Blue, The Knot. Um, we, we love working with The Knot. Um, I would also say um, we, we prefer non-exclusives just because it gives you more exposure, it gives you more backlink, so you can get picked up for a publication from multiple, from multiple places and get Three or four backlinks off of one one publication, rather than an exclusive and getting one. But then again, 
there's the exclusive ones, you also would like to get those as well. So it all depends on the wedding and depends on how it was shot. It really, it also depends on who your target bride is. If your yeah. target bride is a DIY bride who is kind of on a lower budget and um, maybe doesn't have all the super fancy calligraphy and the geo cakes that are totally cool right now, um, you might want to look at more like DIY wedding blogs, Ultimate Wedding Blog or Ultimate Weddings Magazine, the blog or the print. Um, there's there's several options there, and yeah, I think um, one one big thing that's really important to us is because we are based in Southern California, we actually base a lot of our publications on regional uh, blogs because we want to be able to reach the, the local audience. Okay. Local audience. Okay. Um, and so I know that you guys do um, a fair amount of stuff on social, um, So, which I think we'll touch base, base on a little bit later. Um, but we do have a really great question um, from Scott. And he said, I've heard that if we want to ever be published, we can't publish the images anywhere else, like on social media or our blog. Is that true? Um, so I'm going to answer that from the Two Bright Lights uh, standpoint first, and then I'll hand that over to you guys and how, so you guys can kind of talk about social and how you um, go, maneuver through all of that chaoticness at times. Um, so social media. Um, it really so for Scott. It really depends on where you're submitting that album to. If you're submitting um, your album to non-exclusive publications, you can submit and uh, post things on social media. We definitely recommend it. It's great exposure for you, and it's great exposure for your vendors. They love when you um, post about them on social media and showcase their work. Um, but one thing that we do recommend is that you hold back a couple of those showstopper images so that you don't totally steal the thunder of the blog. You know, even though you're submitting to non-exclusives, they still want to feel like they have a little bit of an exclusive content. Um, so do feel free to submit on social, uh, to post on social media. But if you are submitting that album to an exclusive publication, you should not be posting on social media or your blog. Um, a lot of them really are pretty strict about what they're looking for and the exclusivity. Um, so we recommend just holding back just in case. Um, the other thing is that exclusive publications, once your work is accepted and uh, published on their publication, they have a exclusivity period, and it's usually ranging from one to six months. And once that exclusivity period is up, you are free to post um, as much as you want on social media and to as many non-exclusives as you want. So after that exclusivity period is um, is up, go nuts on social. We always think that say that social is a great idea and it really um, can help boost your, your vendor relations. Um, and now I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Randy and Ashley to talk about social and I know they, they can vouch for the, the help with vendor relations as well. Yeah, we, um, we have never had a submission denied because we had shared pictures on social media or on our blog. We actually blogged the wedding um, the same day that we submit the wedding. So our blog's obviously up before any publication. The only publication that we know that is really, really strict about it is Martha Stewart Weddings, which we have not been featured in yet. Um, but that's the only one that I'm aware of that is a, a real stickler for it. No. I think that's the only one that I've heard of. Yeah. Uh, usually we just want to get the... the uh, we want to get our, the, vendors, our vendors, you know, exposed. once a wedding's done, the excitement is still there. You want your, the excitement for the bride, the groom, uh, the grooms and groom, whatever, whatever it is. <laughs> um, and also the vendors. The vendors are excited about this. You want to get that uh, get them exposed to all of their friends right. and all of the vendors out there. They want to share those images as well. So if we withhold that from them, it could be, you know, if you go with a non-exclusive, that you can't post any pictures, it could be six months down the road, they they might want to post it. Yeah, we've we've only had one wedding ever in the in the six years that we've been shooting um, that we weren't able to share a single image and that was for Lou and Chris's wedding because of the um, exclusivity contract that we signed with um, FYI and A and E network. So um, but once we once the show aired we were able to pretty much do whatever we wanted with it. So okay. Um, and then I know you guys mentioned uh, for this question about 
recommending things to first time submitters. You said the album story is really important, including those those details. So um, we have a really good question from Stephanie, and she's asking, what do you suggest um, if you don't have a great album story? She said that she finds that many of her submissions get overlooked because she doesn't have much of a backstory, and she's even created questionnaires for clients to help with this, but often they don't fill it out. So do you have any suggestions? Yes, I do. Uh, I was going to say, oh, we, we, have, <laughs> we, <both do. laughs> we have multiple questionnaires that we send out that are, you know, five to 15 questions each time. That way they're not sitting there for an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. And it, we send it out months, two months, one month well, prior. Well, first, when we, when we first get them, we'll actually send yes. them just a short, let's get to know you questionnaire. And we'll ask them, how did you guys meet? What did you do on your first date? How did you get engaged? What are you most excited about with the wedding? Um, do you have a wedding hashtag so we can start hashtagging the heck out of their photos when we do their engagement photos? Um, it's things like that that we kind of just start that off and they're still really excited about booking us and so every single client has filled out that questionnaire. In addition to that, about six weeks before the wedding, we will send them um, an, another questionnaire about wedding date details that we need to know. Um, so if there's like a, a special, like a foot washing ceremony, so we know that there's going to be some religious aspect to the wedding that we can incorporate into the blog. Or if she says our only living grandparent is going to be in attendance and I'm going to be wearing her pearls. That's just a little detail that you can incorporate into the story. Now if your clients are not filling out the questionnaires, um, I would really recommend having a Skype date or a coffee date with them and just go over the questions and take notes. Um, that way you have that stuff there and readily available. And one last tip is when you're actually at the wedding day, just kind of mentally take note of three things. You want to talk about the venue, you want to talk about a special moment that happened, and you want to talk about the ceremony a little bit, maybe something special that happened, or you know how her father was looking on and couldn't stop crying because he was so excited, or how the flower girl just got so bored standing there that she just started wandering around, and you can kind of make a, a lighthearted joke about it or something like that. So there's always something that um, you can write about, even if the the bride and groom or the couple does not submit the questionnaire. Well, one thing you do also don't want to do is overwhelm the the couple. Yeah. If you if you send multiple questionnaires or a questionnaire that's five pages long, they they're gonna look at your email and be like, oh, another one. It, you don't want that. You want them to have an enjoyable experience with you. You want something that's simple that that they can take five minutes and fill it out. Yeah. And, and make, it, on, make it fun, make it fun, make it exciting, because people love to talk about themselves. They love to tell their story. We firmly believe that every couple has a story, and it deserves to be told. So when you present the questionnaires, you don't say, okay, guys, can you just fill this out for us? You tell them, oh, my gosh, you guys, we are so excited. We'd love to know more about your love story. Can you tell us how you met? That, And then you can go, okay, um, we'd love to know how, who proposed to who? How did it happen? Where did it happen? Tell us about the ring. Tell us about the location. Were you at a, at a special camping trip? Were you celebrating your birthday in Kauai? Were, what were you doing? And then we will take that stuff and put it into the, um, the uh, story. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have to be really observant, Stephanie. <laughs> Great. Um, and then just looking at the, the chat board, I see that, Nicole has a really good point. She said that you can always ask the wedding planner to get info from them as well. Um, and we, we find that a lot of our photographers have luck with that, um, you know, because it's so hard to remember all those details and keep it all uh, organized. And, and Two Bright Lights actually does have a feature as well that you can send kind of an email notification to a wedding planner or somebody that knows those details, and they can help you fill it in as well. So um, there's always ways to... Um, to get that info and make sure that your album story and details are really, um, really great and full of details for those uh, publications. And it's also a reason why wedding planners can be great submitters as well. You know, we always focus on two bright lights and photographers, but we do have a, a account for vendors where they can submit um, too. So it's not just photographers; wedding planners can be um, just as just as much of a catalyst to getting their work published as well. Um, 
So, okay, so let's move on and go to the next question, which is, um, is there something that you feel makes or breaks a submission? Uh, bad photos. <laughs> um, if you submit photos that are really just not of publishable quality, that's definitely going to hurt your chances of getting published. Um, and also submitting photos to a blog that is not representative of their aesthetic. So if you have um, a wedding that is really beautiful, but it's dark, it's candlelit, it's um, a little bit more moody, you don't want to submit that to something that's super bright and airy. Right. So you're just being very, very um, conscious and diligent in doing research on who you're actually submitting to because there's no point in submitting something that's not going to match that blog's blog or publication's aesthetic uh, when you're submitting. And one thing I think is understanding why you want to submit it to that specific blog, understanding what is it just to get that, say, I got published by this blog, or is it something that actually where it's uh, you actually want to incorporate uh, your store that story of that couple for that specific blog and ha tell the story and share it with that specific blog so there there are some blogs and I saw in there um, a question about uh, publications for um, weddings that aren't super detail heavy um, there are several publications that really focus more on the story of the couple you just have to do the research on it I know for sure h and h weddings and um, which is a, a gay-friendly publication. They focus more on the story of the couple, but really the um, details are what publishers are looking for. Bloggers and, and magazines and all of that, their purpose is to educate and inspire future brides and grooms. And so that's why when we're submitting, we submit at least 60% of our photos, of the 150 photos, about 60% of those are detail photos. Right, right. And I can think of off the top of my head too, um, Love Inc. and um, it started with, yes, they specifically say that we want a good story too. But um, you guys have um, a really good point about the detail shots. It, it is, um, you know, we, we do understand that a lot of times the photography is about the emotion and the family shots and things like that. But um, you do, it is important to remember that a lot of publications are trying to write to inspire brides to be and, and just couples planning their day. So they want to be able to show things like the really cool cake or the beautiful bouquet so that, you know, a bride or, or couple planning can, can be inspired and think, hey, that could work for my day. Um, so there was inspiration. Stuff right. for <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, all right. So then moving on to the next question, we want to know when you're shooting what do you guys do to make sure that your work is um, publishable well um, like I said if they, if they have if they're light on details you need to focus on the little details that they have you may focus on the venue itself you need to be able to tell a story with details as well as the the, the couple as well as the family the ceremony taking little details of just the, the reaction the expression the the love that's in the air that you are able to see and capture the moments that's what's going to tell the story you, you don't want to specifically just focus on little tiny minuscule things you want to see the expressions and capturing the love of I I would say uh, I would also say making sure that you're taking a lot of portrait style uh, detail shots. Bloggers really love having the portrait style ones. Uh, I'm sorry, portrait style um, sizing, I guess. Um, sorry, I'm totally drawing a blank on the word. I haven't had enough coffee today. Um, anyway, the por portrait um, submissions are kind of a, a portrait style as, as opposed to horizontal. Um, tend to get a little bit more attention on Pinterest, which bloggers love. And um, if you're, when you're at the wedding, you want to make sure that you're doing um, portrait and horizontal for the, the venue or for the vendor that you're taking the photo of. Um, and you want to do a wide shot, a tight shot, and alternate angles too. Orientation. Thank you, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon there we go. <laughs> All right. Good tips. Um, so. Then kind of, we already touched upon it really quickly, um, but 
just a little bit more about social media. How do you guys fit that into your, your busy schedules? Oh, I'll let you take this one. Yeah, I'm the social media person, <laughs> so 97% of the time when something is published, it's because I've written it. Um, Randy only has Facebook, so I have someone that I'm married to. Um, <laughs> So, anyway, <laughs> um, so we have started using um, an app called Planoly, P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Um, it costs about $80 a year, but we're able to pre-schedule out all of our Instagram posts, um, including all the tags and um, hashtags within the within the photo the only thing it doesn't do is like when you click on the photo and it has the tags in there you have to manually do that once it opens up in Instagram but we will use Planoly to plan out our feed basically for the week um, or even day by day depending on you know what's going on um, and it also helps our feed look a little bit more pretty on Instagram and really cohesive um, I would so I'd say consistency. Um, just making sure that you're not going from a super dark image to a bright image to a super dark image and going back and forth. Uh, be consistent um, throughout the whole time. That's your style. That's what you want to showcase and what you, you want to showcase what your ideal bride is going to be. Yeah. Um, uh, Dina, you asked how you spell it. It's P-L-A-N-O-L-Y. Okay, great tips. And it sounds like you guys use a lot of the same techniques on social that you guys do with your submissions. You're staying consistent, not over editing your images, um, you know, trying to attract those ideal clients. Um, so it's pretty smart. Um, yeah. We, we, one thing that we're, we're very, very conscious of doing is giving credit where credit is due. So uh, all across social media on um, Pinterest, or I'm sorry, not well on Pinterest too, but mostly on Facebook and Instagram, which is kind of where we um, focus our social media presence. Um, we're making sure that we're tagging our vendors, not only in the photo, but in the captions as well. Um, and the reason for that on Instagram, for instance, if you post a picture and you only tag the vendor in the photo, but not in the caption, if a major brand re- um, we post your image, those tags are not going to carry over. Uh, and also, when you go to, let's say we have a, a really great um, wedding planner out here that we work with, um, First Pick Planning. So when their couples go and look at their Instagram accounts and they can see photos that they've been tagged in also, mm -hmm. which is really great. And then the same thing on Facebook. Facebook's uh, business pages also, now I don't know if you guys have seen this, but when you tag the um, the vendor or the person in or the vendor in the um, photo itself, not just in the in the caption, but in the photo itself, it actually shows up on their page as uh, tagged business photos. Okay, interesting. Um, so, and I do notice that there's a, a question from Shannon. She wants to know how many weddings a year do you guys book with Instagram? Oh gosh, um, we booked. I want. <laughs> say about 10 to 15 percent of our weddings from Instagram um, it's actually this year has been a lot more productive with with Instagram it's kind of insane and by uh, the how we were able to do that is using locational tags so we're out near Joshua Tree California which is near Palm Springs California which is in Southern California and so we will hashtag things like Joshua Tree wedding Palm Springs wedding Southern California wedding and brides actually look at that stuff on Instagram Right. Okay. Um, and then kind of a question from I see from Renee that I'm, I'm going to tackle. And then if you guys have anything uh, you want to add, feel free. Um, she's asking, as a unique service wedding vendor, how do I benefit by publishing an album where only one or two pictures were taken of our service? Uh, so this is a really great question, and we're probably asked this one of the more frequent questions that we get asked. Um, and what I would recommend um, is trying to work with your – um, wedding photographer at that event to try to get as many pictures as you can of your service um, so that way you're well showcased in that album so and I know Randy and Ashley you guys touched upon this as well you it's important for photographers to go in and um, get as many pictures of the details and the vendors that they can so then they can further um, build their relationship with those vendors and they're more likely to get picked up and published in that feature as well um, which really helps everybody involved because 
then not only does the vendor get tagged and gets mentioned, but that ven vendor is happy that they're featured and then they remember you guys as a photographer and then they'll recommend you to future clients. Um, it, it's kind of this really nice cycle that starts. Um, so I don't know, Randy and Ashley, did, did I miss anything? Is there any advice that you have for this, uh, for Renee? Um, Renee, I would say that make sure that um, if the photographer does not give you the images themselves, just reach out to them and be like, hey, you know, I'd really like to showcase your work um, while you're showcasing my work. Um, and just using those images yourself and making sure that you're giving credit to the photographer. And even, you know, build a relationship with that photographer and see if maybe they would consider submitting, um, let's say you have like a really cool um, calligraphy uh, wood board that you have made, you could actually do a, a blog feature with them. You can have them take photos and you could be a guest blogger for them or you could even have them be a guest blogger for you um, and just kind of make a symbiotic working relationship. And also with us being photographers, if we really love, uh, say, well, we love all the weddings that we shoot, but if we are really attracted to a specific shop at that specific venue, what we'll do is we'll reach out to them and be like, hey, would you like a canvas or would you like a print of this to hang up in your in your, in your office in your or your workspace or anything like and that? And even provide an album to them. It all depends on what they would like. And just, mm -hmm. like I said, building that that relationship, vendorship, there we go. <laughs> it, it allows uh, you know, to stay established. Great. Um, okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, so this is a fun one. What about your work inspires you guys? Oh, without a doubt, it is the friendships that we build with our couples. Um, we really value and treasure their friendship. Um, they're they are so valuable to us. We we call it the Rad Weddings family, as uh, Randy and Ashley Durham. So Rad <laughs> Weddings. Um, they're part of our family. We just absolutely adore them. We really make sure that we get to know them very, very well before the wedding. We go out for pizza and beer. We go out for pancakes and coffee. Um, we will, at any opportunity, hang out with them. And for us, the reason why we do that is when we show up to the wedding, we don't want to be the photographers. If somebody yep. says, oh, the photographers are here, we have not done our job. We want them to go, oh my gosh, Randy and Ashley are finally here. Or Randy and Ashley um, would like you to you know, come take family pictures or, or that type of thing. And we figure when we're on a first name basis with all, our, not just our couple, but with their moms, their dads, their grandmas, their bridesmaids, their groomsmen, um, when they know us, we have done our job well. And what... In, it makes it easier. Once, uh, it, 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 it makes it so much easier when they feel relaxed. They know you. They know who you are. They, they've built friendships with you. And just... I think just capturing the actual true emotion of a family getting together, celebrating a joyous occasion yeah. is what inspires me. And it's, it's really just, it, I know wedding publications don't always care about the family photos, but those are some of our favorite um, things to do during the wedding because those are the ones that are going to be hanging up on the walls as beautiful as pictures of rings and bouquets and shoes and flowers and all that um, is it's the family portraits that really, um, resonate with with a lot of the the family and friends at the wedding and so um we make sure that we will get a list of the requested family groupings before the wedding so we can print it out and bring it with us and cross it off as we go and that way we don't miss anything yeah and then we will also add on to the list if they don't have something on their list yeah. hey you should do this shot as well you need a picture of grandma. And just, i don't know it just makes it a uh, Makes them feel at ease when you're able to, to establish a friendship with them. And when you when you put that attention into detail um, with getting to know them, you, you show up and you know that their parents have been divorced and you know not to put them next to each other in photos. You know that if grandma is the last living grandparent in the family, you know that you want to take a picture of her with mom and dad, her with the, the bride or the groom, whoever they're related to. You want to make sure that you're capturing those those moments that they have specifically mentioned at one point or another, whether they said it on purpose so that you knew or if they just mentioned it in passing, um, being very, very observant and really caring about um, 
these memories because this is a one sh this is a one shot thing. You you can't mess you it can't up. Mess so it up. Um, it's just it's really inspiring to us to to making sure that we're not just capturing the details of the day, but that we're really capturing the details of the day. No, I'd right? say that. That's what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and then. There we go. Oops, I went a little too fast. Um, so last question. What do you guys wish you knew when you were first starting out as photographers? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I'll let you answer this one. And I'll, I'll respond after. Okay. <laughs> um, I would say that this has nothing to do with publication, but um, valuing your time. Um, when we first started our business, we figured out that we were making about $2.14 an hour after all the hard work that we put in. And part of that was just being a novice at things like Photoshop and blogging and stuff. And it obviously you get a lot better and faster with that as, as time goes on. But the um, valuing your time and making sure that you're pricing yourself so that being in business for yourself really m makes a difference and that you're not just being a photographer because you think it's an easy way to make a quick buck because that's that's not how you that's not how you become successful. Yeah. I would say uh, probably just uh, relationships with your vendors. Um, also, Bu want, building relationships, building the trust. Yeah, building that trust factor with getting published and sharing the images. And you should never have a vendor reach out to you saying, "Hey, do you think we could use those pictures?" Because we never got them. And we hear that a lot from a lot of vendors. They, oh, we never got the pictures from other other photographers. Other photographers. And they, they're always so so grateful that we get those images to them. Usually within about two weeks of the wedding, um, and we submit, we send them the entire gallery, and we go, look, guys, here's the whole gallery. These are full resolution. Do with them what you want. Just don't edit them. And uh, give us credit. And when you give us credit, we'll be sure that we're liking on it and loving on it, and we're um, sharing it. And Really supporting other businesses, building building friendships and relationships with other businesses. Great. Um, well, so this has been great, and I know we've been asking questions mostly from what we, uh, May and I, kind of put together and thought would be useful for everybody uh, watching. So now we do want to turn it over to you guys, um, and I'm going to put the screen back on Randy and Ashley. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so. I just want to give everybody a few minutes to um, type in their questions, and um, you know, this is we're going to be wrapping up in a few minutes. Um, so, um, I do have one question that I want to address. Um, it's from Stefan, and they're asking how should cinematographers submit. Um, so, I do want to just um, give you guys a little overview that there are different. Two Bright Lights accounts. So we have the photographer account, we have a vendor account, and we also have the um, a cinematographer videographer account. And um, with that account, you can um, go in and submit your album and include your video from the day and uh, submit to publications that way. One thing we do recommend is that. Um, you try to work with photographers to include your video in an album with photos since a submission with both video and photos is a stronger submission. Um, we don't have a ton of publications that are looking strictly for video. They usually always want photos. Um, so we recommend if you can team up with a photographer, that's even better. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the questions. So what Shannon's asking, when you say full resolution, do you have a pixel, pixel size? Um, so I, again, I can answer from Two Bright Lights and then Randy and Ashley if you guys want to um, chime in as well. For Two Bright Lights, we do require that all submissions be at least um, 2,000 pixels wide. Pickles, yeah. Um, <laughs> pixels. <laughs> pixels wide. Um, so that way editors can have um, large images and then size down from there if um, yeah, we when when we export our image, we use Lightroom to edit. When we export, we do not resize the images. So when we are submitting the full resolution images, they are the full resolution images straight out of our Nikon D seven fifties. Great. We don't we don't make them smaller for publication. Just in case, if you submit to a, a print magazine, they want those full resolution images, and um, the bigger the better. 
some love on here. Randy, I, I do agree with Steph Stefani, uh, if that's how you say your name, um, your bow tie is very cute. <laughs> Stephanie yeah. is our a very treasured assistant photographer. We oh, okay. <laughs> you did say some family would be, and yeah. yeah. She is family. Yes, yeah, she is in our rat wedding family. <laughs> right. Um. So another question is, oh, okay, I'll try this one first. Any oh. tips when posting <laughs> pictures on Instagram? Um, how do you manage handling? Stay on top of everything. You're getting organized. When handling social media accounts, I'm new to the social media department of Floral and Event Design Company, and I work for, and I'm having trouble handling the tasks. That's a it, it, um, Dina, or I think it's Dina. Um, you combined ours. Yeah. So um, I'm just gonna reread the question real quick. How do you manage staying on top of everything? Um, we prioritize. Prioritizing is really kind of um, what has allowed us to stay seen in a very, very busy industry. Um, Stephanie says tee -hee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say figure out where your brides are. Are your brides and, and grooms, are they on Instagram? Yes, they are. Are they on Pinterest? You better believe it. Are they on Twitter? Maybe not. Um, I know our, <laughs> our couples are not huge tweeters. So um, when we are blogging our, our images, we will actually pin images directly from our blog onto Pinterest so that people can reshare it. We've gotten a lot of wedding inquiries and bookings from Pinterest too. Um, and then with Instagram, like we said earlier, we use Planoly and that really, really helps out. And when you're sharing on Instagram, you can actually share from Instagram directly onto the business page and the whole thing will transfer over the caption every and the location. The only thing that doesn't transfer over are the photo tags. You'll have to go in and actually manually do that, but that doesn't take um, too long. Okay, great. Just prioritize, guys, prioritize. Yeah. <laughs> List. Lists are a great thing. Lists, uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, Sue is asking, is there a way on TBL to target markets and requests for what publications are looking for? Um, so there is, and then we have the request tab, um, and on that tab you can go through and see what everybody, what all publications are looking for in real time. Um, we, the, you can filter by location, um, and I think by publication type, so if they're exclusive or not exclusive. Um, right now, I know somebody else had asked this, um, if you can go through and, um, filter by like rustic or modern types wedding. We don't have that built in yet, but it's definitely something that we are always trying to improve on. So we know that request tab is so important. Um, so I want to kind of turn it over to Randy and Ashley. How do you guys um, sort through the submission request and so that way you're not spending too much time but then have still have a game plan going in before you actually hit submit on an album? Well, when we have done um, in the past is we'll actually go through the um, list of uh, publications that Two Bright Lights works with, and we'll, I mean, you can look at the name, and you, you're going to see, like, Chesapeake Bride. Well, obviously, we're not on the, the East Coast, so that's just not one we're ever going to submit to. Also, it gives a brief detail and it does, of what it, they're looking for. Well, like, it gives a, a brief um, synopsis, I guess is the right word, of, like, what kind of blog they are. So if you have um, like DIY weddings blog, that's pretty self-explanatory. But there's some of them that are like the frosted petticoat. Well, what in the world is a frosted petticoat? So you have to go and look to see like what that blog is about. And if you're a list maker like I am, you can go, okay, so Rustic Wedding Chic, they really like Rustic Weddings. Um, DIY Ultimate Wedding Magazine, they really like DIY stuff. You can, um, and in the in the submissions thing, there's actually a little thing where you can search, and you can type in certain like keywords, um, and it will pop up. So let's say you live in Colorado. If you type in the word Colorado, you're gonna have Colorado Couture, Colorado Courtship, um, the Not Colorado Print, and I think there's one or two other ones that I'm totally drawing a blank on. But it's actually very um, geographically locational and regional, um, so that way you can submit specifically to those kinds of blogs. And okay. Great. Uh, and so I have a question that I'm not really going to talk to because I know Randy and Ashley, you guys um, traveled a lot um, when first starting out. So there's a question that um, I wonder what advice you have for someone like myself who isn't located 
in an area where a lot of brides and grooms use planners or designers or other vendors um, pre than pretty much florists. So I know you guys moved around a lot. So for somebody who's not able to stay in one place that's maybe super popular with all those types of um, wedding pros, what do you guys have for some advice? Well, first, well, first we say hi, Raylene. Thank you for asking that. Um, <laughs> Raylene's one of our dear friends. <laughs> well, I think I think one of the things that we've done is actually um, each every wedding has a venue. Every every wedding is going to have usually floral. So and they have rings. And rings. they're wearing a dress. So you, you have reach out. And so you can go and reach out to these venues. Hey, can we sit down and have coffee? Hey, what can I do to help your business grow? And not going in looking at it as if. Um, hey, what can we get from this? It's what can we help you with? And just happen to bring your camera. Like, hey, do you need any shots in your area, your, your venue here? Do you, do you need headshots? Do you, do, need, you do you have a new lawn? Do you have a new archway that you'd really like to um, start having wedding center and just kind of going in there and um, offering your services from true, you know, the true kindness of your heart, not going in there with the purpose of saying this is all for me, yeah. but you really need to focus on them. Don't go in there expecting something out of them. Yeah. Just go in there and be genuine with them and talk and actually have lunch or have breakfast. Buy them lunch. Bring them a bottle of yeah. wine. They love <laughs> wine. Um, and, and one thing that we want to mention is I would say less than half of our couples use a wedding planner. Um, a lot of our couples are DIY brides and they are um, sometimes they will hire day of coordinators but they are planning this 100% by themselves and so when we're um, giving these wedding images back to them we want to make sure that we are praising them and going oh my gosh this bride spent six weeks hand making comic book um, little bouquets and Little, uh, we had one wedding that she folded 300 paper cranes. Wow! <laughs> like they, you want to, you want to just sing their praises and that type of thing. It's even though they don't have a wedding planner, those are little details that if you capture it and you give them praise and then you tell the publishers about, publishers eat that stuff up. They love little details like that. Great. Um, so I'm just gonna take a peek and see if there's any other questions. Um, and guys uh, watching, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to send them in. We're going to start wrapping up in a minute. Wine makes everything better. Yes, Stephanie, it does. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cupcake Moscato. <laughs> okay. um, I think we're probably going to wrap it up. Uh, it looks like we've, we've covered a lot of great questions, um, and we're really glad to um, have Randy and Ashley with us here. This is our first, um, hopefully, of many educational um, guest webinars that we're planning to do in the future. Um, it's always great to hear from you guys and to hear your perspective on um, these questions. So we just want to say thank you. Um, it's been it's been an awesome hour. I can't believe that was an hour. Uh, it flew by. Hey Tessa, I just saw two questions pop up that I just want to answer really, really quick. Um, Shiva asked um, if we if they can submit day after wedding sessions. Sure. Okay, why not submit them? Submit them. There's details for those. There's shoes. There's rings. Sometimes they they have their hair and makeup done. Absolutely, you never know. And then Sue asked about number of words for a blog. We recommend um, at least three hundred words. Great. Good tips. All right. Well, and then, oh, I just want to do a little plug for social media. Feel free to follow us on Two Bright Lights and follow Randy and Ashley and their blog for all their great tips as well. Um, their Instagram feed is a lot of fun. We love it here at Two Bright Lights. So <laughs> um, like, we just want to say thanks again, um, and, and we hope to do this soon. Awesome. Well, and thanks if, for if having any, us. If anybody has any questions, you guys are always welcome to email us yep. or uh, reach out to us on social media, and we'll help you any way we can. Great. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Tessa. Bye, Megan. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>